Today we're excited to welcome someone who carved a unique path to fulfill a dream. Kristen Voss joins us to talk about creating a product with purpose, standing out in a saturated marketplace, and winning the Entrepreneur Elevator Pitch. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's give Kristen the biggest, warmest welcome. <laughs> oh, it's so fantastic to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited to be here. Can we go right into the present that you brought we me? We can. I wanted to bring you a couple of the things that were my, some of my favorite products um, that so I made. Nice. So, Thank just you. a few things. I heard that there might be a lip gloss in here. There so is. I, I didn't put anything on yet. Uh -huh. um, and I heard that you painted this. I do. So I hand paint all of my own bags and I like hand stamp all of my tissue paper because you know, I think that like the personal side of it is just as important as the products. So there's the the lip gloss is lovely. I actually just made these about a week ago. So those the one that I'm giving you is the pink champagne. This is um, from your Kvos beauty line. Mm -hmm. And you said that when you made this like a, a few weeks ago, uh -huh. what do you mean you made this? So most of the products I make myself um, in my kitchen, for real. Really? Um, yeah, the most the. Um, the most I've made at one time is about uh, 13,000 for one order. If it's anything more, usually if it's anything more than like 10,000, I have to source it out to my manufacturer. This feels really good. Thank you. And everything is certified wow. vegan and 100% organic. Well, it's experiential. Like the second you, you hold the box in your hand and you open it, mm -hmm. you, you crack the product, you smell it, you put it on. Yeah, the scent is this, a big thing for this me. This is made with a lot of love, I can tell. Oh. Tell us exactly what is Kvos Beauty? And um, you know, why was it important to you to launch this business? So, I, you know, when I, when I first started making products, it was just because I had become aware of how many chemicals were in the ones that I was using. Um, you know, there were, if you use, if you use 10 products a day, there's over 540 chemicals. I mean, just in 10 products. And I think a lot of us women use a lot more than that sometimes. Absolutely. Um, so I just started making stuff at home and, you know, and it, it, it came out lovely. It came out really lovely. And then I thought to myself, you know, people don't know that what you put on your skin, it goes straight into your bloodstream faster than if you actually ate it. Basically what I wanted to do was create something that was totally vegan, totally organic. And, and was healthy and nourished yeah. you, you know, and didn't strip away your skin. Well, the last time I saw you, it, this is the first time I've met you in person, but I saw you on the Entrepreneur Elevator Pitch with Danica Patrick, mm -hmm. and you won. I mean, they loved your product. Um, that, that was exciting to see that. And so for those watching who don't know how this show works, you get in an elevator. <laughs> And you have like 60 seconds and the elevator goes up and there are people watching you on cameras. Mm -hmm. Danica Patrick was one of them and, yeah. and she was, it was with us. Mm -hmm. And the door opens or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So you have 60 seconds to make your pitch, literally your elevator pitch, and yeah. you get like a, a red or a green light. Well, there's a clock. There's a huge yeah. digital clock counting down. That's like that you're looking in your at face. in your face, and so you're looking at it. And you're <laughs> and it's like a two-way mirror. You know, people are watching yeah. you. Yeah, and 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 it's just it's 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 actually terrifying because it's like you are trying to spit out as many words as you can. Yeah, and you know, make your get up, get across what you want to say. But how can you make what you do in your business sound as sixty seconds? Like, how can you be that yeah. concise? So it was like, and so the doors open. Mm -hmm. They actually agree to see you. Yes. And you step out mm -hmm. and you you go through talking about your business and, and impress these folks. How did you keep your composure in that sort of a high pressure environment? That's super kind of you. I didn't think that I did. I thought you did great. I think that's really nice of you to say. I guess if I watch it again, I might think differently about it. I think we're just all hardest on ourselves. Well, we are. You know, and when you watch yourself, you are your toughest critic, yeah. right? But do you yeah. think that quality in you, because not everybody has that quality, do you think that is part of what makes you successful? See, I don't even define myself as like really successful. Okay. I, I am, I'm super happy every day with what I do, which is awesome. Yeah. So that's my success. I'm not successful really, you know, financially or um, I guess in ways that other people might dictate what success is, but in, as far as what how, what I think success yeah. is, I think I'm when I think I'm pretty successful because I'm super happy every day with what I do. And your background is in art. Yeah. And and we we did see the painted yeah. bag and stamped tissue with that love that you put into what you do. But 
Are there other ways that your background in art influences your work today with K Boss Beauty? I mean, I think that with being an artist, everything was, my life has always been about, been super colorful and been, you know, about creating something that's beautiful and sharing it and seeing other people enjoy it. You owned a restaurant. I did. <laughs> yeah, okay, I have to ask that because you ran your restaurant bar for four years yeah. and then you ended up selling it. Mm -hmm. And this was before you launched the, your beauty line. Yeah. I bartended to get, put myself through college. Okay. Um, and then, you know, when I first moved to New York City, um, uh, I, you know, got a job at an ad agency um, as an assistant. And, you know, they basically pay you in hugs there. You know, like you oh, don't yeah. make much money. Oh, absolutely. So, um, so I had to get, you know, a bartending job to, you know, to be able to live in the city. And then from there, I just, you know, I was making in one night at a bar what I was making in a week and a half at the ad agency. So I started bartending at clubs, and um, I saved a bunch of money, and um, and then I had an opportunity to um, to be a partner in this business, and I thought this is awesome. I want to own my own. I wanted to be an owner. I, yes. I knew that I knew that I wanted to own something. I didn't want to be working for someone else. That's all I knew. Um, this was a good first stab at um, owning something else, but this was not a good. This was a really really. Um, tremendously difficult experience. Um, owning a business as such, like a bar, is just, yeah. it's an, I mean, it's a 26 hour a day, eight day a week job. You never, you're never and not working. How did you know it was time to get out? My partners. I had some, you know, my partners basically um, were, you know, were not, were not really doing the right thing. And okay. so it was one of those things where I just knew, I mean, the business was starting to not do well. And I was, before, you know, before things got any worse, I just wanted to, Try and find a good buyer for it, and I did. It has, you know, it has a nice, it has a nice home with these other people. Yeah. So. And that's part of it too, knowing when to pivot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and now you've pivoted, you've pivoted to Kavos Beauty, and this this line is, it's just it's it's your passion. Everything really does come is made with love, and it really does come from a good place. You know, I mean, I have spent, I didn't have like you know a like a famous parent that just said, what do you want to do? Here's money for a purse line. Or, right. you know, everything that I make has been, come from hours and hours of trial and error, like good old fashioned, you know, learning and, and making mistakes and figuring it out. And um, and they're all they're all really good products. And they're all really simple, basic products. And they are products that should, when you use them, you should just feel good about yourself. How do you think about standing out from other competitors in this space? Name recognition is a huge thing, and since I don't have the same name recognition as, say, Tata Harper or you know, right. or one of the other really big brands, um, I don't think that it's it frustrates me sometimes because I don't think enough people are getting exposed to products that are as um, as really nourishing as mine. But you know, with, with time. So what are some of the things that you do to kind of help get yourself out of the doldrums? Because you have a beautiful product and you are positive and people do know who you are. So what, what sort of things do you do that could help people watching, you know, when they're in a similar mindset to get out of it? You know, I mean, the, one of the biggest things that I do for myself is the, the environment that I work in. Yeah. I keep it a really happy, bright place. Yeah. Um, you know, my I, I work out of my apartment, and I keep a very specific part of my apartment, like very bright, very happy, um, lots of light, and you know, and wine helps. <laughs> so. Well, I like that you work wine into your product <laughs> lineup. Thank you for opening up and sharing your personal story with us. Thank you. That really was fantastic. And now I want to kind of spice things up a bit and play a little game. In hustle time, we set a clock for 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. and okay, we... so you're having, I'm having an elevator flashback. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say the stakes are actually pretty low. Can I have 60 seconds on the clock? All right. Three, two, one, go. Football, NFL or soccer? Um, NFL. Aliens, fact or fiction? Fiction. Beer or wine? Wine. Favorite part of a s'more? Um, chocolate. Top quality you look for in an employee? I don't have anybody working for me. Camping or glamping? Um, camping. Finish this sentence. When I dance, I look like? Someone who shouldn't be dancing. New York <laughs> tourists, help with directions or keep on your own way? Uh, I mean, I'll help them. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Um, superpower, um, 
la, la, to be invisible. Best chocolate in the world comes from? Um, a non-dairy farm. King size or friend size? King size. Would you rather fly or talk to animals? Talk to animals. Favorite holiday? Uh, my birthday. Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Binge watch or watch weekly? Binge watch. Your go-to outfit? Uh, sweatpants. Music or podcasts? Music. Three things in your closet right now? In my closet, sweatpants, sweatpants, sweatpants. Fireplace or fire pit? Fireplace. What's the most successful person you know? Um, someone who's happy, anyone who's happy. I'm gonna count it, I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna count that. 17, 18, 19, 20. 20, that is, that is a lot. Is that good? Yeah, no, I got really, no, really, uh, for real, that's really good. We ask these 10 or so questions to every entrepreneur okay. who comes on, and it's, it's fun to see how different people answer the same question. Okay. Favorite part of your day? Uh, first thing in the morning when I wake up because I get to snuggle with my dog. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Keep going. Worst piece of advice? I think any advice from anyone that um, compromises your integrity or your morals can be considered bad advice. How do you use your career to inspire others? You know, I just sort of try and lead by example. You know, when I owned my bar, if a table needed to be bussed, I would bust it. So if people would see it needed to get done, you know, and then they'd think, oh, look what she's doing. So I just think doing the right thing by example is the best way. Um, ever felt like walking away? Not in a long time. One thing you still need to learn? Uh, to not trust everybody. What do you want people to learn from you? That if you really do what you love, um, it doesn't matter how much money you make. What's next for you? To keep growing, I hope. Who inspires you? My mom. Who challenges you? My mom. Well, we let everybody know in social that you were coming. And I have a question from an entrepreneur who was working on an app, wants to learn something from you. So Shethwala asks, um, what is one tip that you can give them for their app is they're trying to launch um, a fashion marketplace app in today's crowded app space. What's some advice that you would give this person? I'm not a really big app person. Um, and a lot of these, you know, these shopping apps are, you know, are, they're great, but if you're a smaller business, you, it kind of limits the smaller businesses because they, they don't have the financial capabilities to participate in them. And, you know, these apps always take a percentage. Um, so I would just say, you know, the, the, the best advice I can give anyone is just really know your industry, like really know your marketplace and really know who you're competing against and find something that's different about you and make that part stand out. That's fantastic. Well, I have one more question. More advice needs to be given and this advice is for Noodle, our favorite pug. So Noodle is approaching 11 human years which is about 60 in dog years. Noodle is noticing <laughs> some, some fairly prominent wrinkles. I see. Um, what advice would you give to Noodle around looking and feeling younger? Um, you really are only as old as you feel you are. I think Noodle is just perfect. Thank you for saying that he is. Look at his little face. Every wrinkle is cute to me. He's perfect just the way he is. Don't change a thing. It's a matter of like what you feel inside, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Your inner Absolutely. projects outward. Your inner noodle. Find your inner noodle. Your inner noodle. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. That's actually amazing. Well, and, and in the spirit of inspirational sort of phrases, I have three quotes that I would love to share with you. And I would love to ask that you tell me what quote resonates the most with you and why, okay? One. The past cannot be changed. The future is in your power. Number two, never limit yourself because others' limited imagination. Never limit others because of your own limited imagination. Number three, my mission in life is to not merely survive, but to thrive. The first one. The first one, okay. Because the past is the past, and we all make mistakes, and um, I've made my share, and so always looking forward and you know, keeping what's in the past being the past and move forward. Thank you for opening up today. I really appreciated talking with you. This was a you lot too. of fun. And I fun. love my presents. You're welcome. I will use my presents all spring and summer. I hope you love so that. Excited. I, I love, love them. them. A new K-Boss customer. I am a new K-Boss <laughs> customer. And I want to encourage everybody watching, if you really enjoyed the interview today, follow K-Boss Beauty across social. What are you on, on Instagram? 
KVOS NYC. KVOS NYC. And follow GoDaddy too, because every week we are bringing more fabulous entrepreneurs just like Kristen your way. So follow GoDaddy across social, follow KVOS NYC, and we'll see you all soon. Bye.